Hello and welcome. Today we're going to have a look at the Asus machine. Right over here we have the Tough Gaming Machine with an AMD Ryzen 5 and my recommendations for starting off with a laptop that you want to start learning with Blender and also some quick tidbits that you can also use for trying to get the best out of your machine. This is also specifically for those who use the GTX line of Nvidia graphics cards and how to best get the maximum out of it. So what I do have here is the AMD Ryzen 5 and my recommendations is that if depending on your budget, you could go with an AMD Ryzen 7 or an Intel Core i9 or 7, whichever way it should be able to get you started with Blender. So this is good for those who are starting off their learning experience within Blender and I've left based on your budget, some links to some very good machines on Amazon. So without further ado, let us jump in to Blender and learn how to be able to get some quick settings so as to be able to work with if you're using any of the GTX line of machines. Now, before we begin to optimize our Blender experience, whenever we are working with a, um, a GTX uh, graphics card, we would want to first and foremost update our graphics card to the latest drivers. This can help us one way or the other to speed up our workflow whenever we are working because Blender constantly is updating itself. Unlike other 3D softwares that takes quite a while to get updates, Blender is always, always updating itself. So it's always a good practice to always be able to try and then update your drivers as possible. NVIDIA gives us the options to either download the studio drivers or game ready drivers. Studio is when you are actually going to use it for your 3D applications or your video and multimedia applications. So that way it would handle it quite well. So um, if you come over to your search, you can normally type in NVIDIA. NVIDIA GeForce Experience, that's what you want to open. And when you click on check for updates, or drivers, you come over here, you choose your driver preference. So we can have the game ready and then the studio driver, but for the purposes of our tutorial, you can always update whenever they update. They normally go with either the game ready, the studio driver, they come in pairs. In this case, I have the game ready driver set up, but I'm going to install now for the studio drivers. So what you just do is it gives you the actual date. So we can just quickly download and give it some bit of time to finish up. Once it is done with the updates, we should be able to now start with optimizing our scene over here. Now that we've updated our graphics cards, the next thing that we want to check is to make sure that we are using the right render device for our graphics card within Blender. And the way to do that is to check on our, our preferences and on the systems, we have to make sure that we are selected using the NVIDIA GT GeForce GTX. And also, we want to also make sure we're rendering in CUDA. If you are using an RTX graphics card, you would want to use Optics. And if you are using any of the Radeon graphics cards, of course, we don't have one, it only show here, but normally that comes as the OpenCL. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to stick with uh, CUDA. So now that we've made sure all our settings are done, the next thing that we also want to make sure to do is whenever we are going to render, we want to switch our G device from CPU to GPU compute. So that way it gives it a much more faster uh, preview than when we are using the CPU. So an example is if we are to switch over to our, our render view, I'm going to switch over to our CPU and now looking from here, you can actually tell we are the number of samples that we want our scene to have and the time is going to take for it to finish. Now you can see that it's going to 
uh, for this amount of time we will have to wait for like a minute or two before our cpu is able to render to our viewports so that we will have a clear scene but when we switch over to the gpu you will actually see a very 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 different story in terms of the render speed so as this is almost done you can see it gave give it to about So let's say we used almost um, a minute to do so. So that's with the CPU. Now, if we switch over to the graphics card, GPU compute, now we'll see how long it takes for the graphics card to be able to process all that. So with the samples, so we are done in almost less than 10 seconds so that's the that's how powerful it is when you are using your graphics card to actually do your viewport rendering so this helps you out when you are when you need to move around and just have a quick uh, overview of how your render might look like when you finally output it so this is one um, cool trick and one other uh, trick that you also need to factor is whenever you are rendering you always want to apply the noise because most of the time cycles would produce some noise whenever you are um, giving out your final outputs and there's a built-in denoiser that helps clean off all the noises if you are using an nvidia graphics card once you set your denoise on you always set it to optics so that way whatever uh, preview you're going to see here the nvidia graphics card will help to clean it up for you and another bonus tip will be the amount of samples you set here for your um, cycles uh, render that's the same amount you start with the samples over here in your denoiser so that way it will denoise and also give you a faster preview also when you are dealing with your um, very hefty scenes so the next thing that we are going to look at is also when you want to reduce your texture sizes. So we have here a bunch of trees and all. Now I'm going to show you how to be able to reduce your textures. And that's a common practice that you can do here. But I'm yet to find out a way to actually do so within Blender to actually change all the texture files within your scene. Now, what we want to do is if we select maybe any of the objects, or in this case, we can switch to our image editor. And what we'll do here is we'll select any of these. Let's um, select any one of these that has. So let's select the grass. So we want to resize our texture. So in this case, this is a 1024 by 1024. So if we take this down to 256 to 256, what that does is that it reduces the file size or reduces the resolution of the texture. So if you have very high end um, textures they, that can actually be a dent or that can actually be very taxing on your memory so this is one way to be able to reduce the size of your textures without actually losing much quality but if you want to go high end there's another way that you can actually um, get your machine to also work smoother whilst maintaining that, those textures when you're finally rendering and the way to go about that is to head over to your preferences and under your viewport, we have under here textures. So what we want to do is the limit size shows it off. What that means is that all the textures on your scene are going to be previewed or rendered out on the viewports 
as they are so if it's 4k it's going to come out as 4k on your render screen if it's 8k it's going to do so if it's 1024 by 1024 it's going to come out that way but you can actually force blender to actually preview all those textures to a texture size so in this case we're going to tell it to render by 256 by 256 so what that does is that now we can have our scene with 256 by 256 for all the textures in our preview here but when we are rendering or giving out the final render output we're going to get it at the highest resolution over there so depending on your workflow if you find out that you need to actually save all your textures within all your textures as 256 by 256 then you go by the approach of resizing over here and if you feel that you can your machine can be able to handle the final renders you can actually just switch over from your preferences to actually display them as 256 by 256 resolution now the next um, tidbit that we can look out for is if you have a lot of objects in your scene we've done all the textures and everything and you still find out that it is still um not running smooth or you're not able to work smooth on your machine there's a way to actually as you can see here it's still having that drag even with the textures dealt with but we can still force ourselves to you know um get the computer to respond a bit more quicker with some few tips now the next one that we're going to do is we are going to convert or change the viewport to display these models as bounding boxes and this is a very very powerful way to actually free up a lot of memory on your scenes so that you can actually work a bit more smoother so we have here some trees and some plants and flowers and some um, street lamps within this uh, setting so what we're going to do is we're going to try as much as possible to turn most of these into bounding boxes since we know what each of these uh, represents and we want to free up the memory what we're going to do is now for the coconut trees i have here them labeled and what i'll do is i'll select all of them now to change this to bounding box you simply head over to your object properties come over to viewports and display as textured so what we'll do is set this to bounding box so it's done so for one but to actually apply to all of it you right click and say copy to selected so what that happens is it changes all this to bounding boxes and we can repeat that for most of these other models so So now that we have this all displayed as bounding boxes, you can actually now have a much, much, much more smoother experience. And the cool thing about this is even though it displays this way, if we come back to our render viewport, it shows the bounding boxes, but you would actually now see the actual models in them over there so this helps you to switch back and forth and still have a smoother uh, workflow so these are just a few tips to help you out if you are using the nvidia gtx line of graphics cards this becomes a bit more smoother if you're using the new rtx machines they are pretty quite powerful um i will get my hands on one of those machines soon and then we'll see the difference in terms of um, workflows when you are working with them but if you are using this if you are a college student or you're just starting out with uh, 3d and you have yourself a good machine that you can use to start your learning process the gtx line of graphics cards are pretty cheaper nowadays you can have it for a few uh, slightly below a thousand dollars but um, if you want to go the RTX way, you can you expect to pay more. But um, for now, I think these uh, these graphics cards can still be able to pack a punch 
for the next maybe a year or two and in which case maybe i would advise that you would try and then upgrade your machines to these rtx machines so this has been a quick overview of how you can give your workflow a bit of a smooth experience if you are using your gtx line i have links to machines if you're interested to so machines that i would advise or i recommend that you can try out if you're learning or you're starting off with blender or graphics in general thank you and i'll catch you in the next one